that good. This year actually marks the 20 year anniversary of the release of Blue Stinger on the Sega Dreamcast, originally from Graphics Climate and also released by Activision in the North American parts. Now this is one of my favorite games growing up, it's a survival horror based game, kind of like Resident Evil or even Zombies Revenge on Dreamcast if you've played that. The cool thing is, the graphics look pretty good. The only kind of weird thing is the voice acting is kind of weird. It does have cheesy lines, like every other the game we played as a kid, but the voice acting is when somebody will talk, they kind of look like a ventriloquist dummy as they keep moving their mouth even though no words are coming out. This also could have been due to a translation or a dubbing because the game was actually released in Japan. So when it came over to the States, they probably didn't dub it correctly. However, it doesn't take away from the gameplay at all. You'll notice the graphics are pretty good looking at them. Um, the players are actually very, very well modeled as you can see. The, even the, the tiniest little details are pretty good. And this is 20 years ago on the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast had so many good things with it. So many things that it, it just revolutionized what it was doing. Of course, it was overlooked by the PlayStation eventually. But it was showing so many good things of its engine. One thing you'll also notice about the game that kind of throws you off a little bit is the controls can be a little stiff. As it's kind of hard to move around, but you get used to it pretty quickly. The game is set in the not too distant future or past in our instance of 2018. You start off as playing as Elliot, who is basically a rescuer on vacation away from Dinosaur Island. Now Dinosaur Island is a place that they believe a meteor hit 65 million years ago and actually killed the original dinosaurs. So this island is actually a result of that meteor. Eventually something bad happens with Elliot when he's on the boat with his friend and his friend actually perishes and Elliot has actually forced to swim to shore and that's where all the adventure happens. You start to see these monsters that start to pop up. You meet new characters as you go along and we'll get to new characters in a minute but as you'll notice running around is actually kind of weird as I explained earlier but you get used to it pretty quick. Combat in the game is actually really cool. There's two types of combat. There's actually bare hand combat that Elliot can do using his karate moves similar to a Streets of Rage if you think about it or even there's actually gun combat, which Elliot can actually use different guns, or he, you can also use other characters with their weapons as well, and they'll find them throughout the game. The game is also very puzzle based, as you have to find certain areas to climb around to get to certain areas that you can't reach. Now the objective of the game to get to certain areas is collecting their ID cards, keys, etc. And you'll need to use these puzzles to get those things. Also, they can also lead to save states. These safe states are usually accompanied by vending machines that have food or weapons, mostly ammunition for your character to survive throughout the game. Another great aspect that the developers put in is that you can actually play different characters in the game and you can interchange them throughout the game. Kind of like Ninja Turtles in NES, as you can switch between different turtles. You can do it with different characters in here. You can switch between Elliot, Janine King, which is a female who is a shooter or security guard in the game. Or you can switch between my favorite character dogs and just i mean just look at him he looks like a typical 1990s stereotypical biker slash boatsman or captain of a ship i mean he has a great interest just check it out That was close. Thanks for helping me. My name is Elliot G. Balad. Where's Tim? Well, who are you? Dogs. I'm a captain of the SS Deanna. If you're Elliot, you must be with Tim. Tim is... Tim is what? Dead? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know? Is that Easter's answer? As you can tell, dog means business. Another cool thing and aspect of the game is that you have actually the opportunity to download maps. Now this is usually done by the save points in the game. 
So you actually can look around and see where you're at, zoom around and by just pressing the start button and go into the map and you download each section as you go. So if you want to look for your ways out, you can look around the map. Now, Blue Stinger is not the greatest game in the world. Like I said, it does have flaws with some of the controls as well as, you know, the visual of the mouth moving with the players in their dialogue. But besides that, you can actually overlook that as it's minuscule to this overall story. The gameplay is actually really good once you get used to controls. It's actually one of the best survival horror games I've ever played. Not counting D2, which I will probably do a review on later, but Resident Evil as well. The game is actually really, really fun to play through, and it's also really, really fun to figure out what to do as far as puzzles. Now, I'm a person that doesn't really like to use strategy guides or walkthroughs because I like to experience it myself or the frustration myself, but you're more open to do whatever you want. Now, as far as price, I actually picked this game up for 20 bucks on eBay, which is actually a really, really decent price. And sometimes it goes between 40 and 50, and it actually came in great condition. Now, you can usually maybe trade on eBay or even pick it up at a Craigslist, but it's actually worth checking it out as it's one of the granddaddies of the old survivor horror genre. So if you have time, I would recommend picking it up and playing it. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.